Welcome to Why You Should Play, a show where I try to convince you to play a game that I love, and at the very end give you some similar games to try. This time, I think you should play From Software's Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Sekiro maintains the core of what a Soulsborne game is. It'll put you in a twisted, interconnected world brimming with mystery. It'll have you creeping between bonfire-like checkpoints, fearing for your hoarded XP. It'll reward you for improving your skill at the game. It'll even let you learn and dissect a seemingly impossible boss until they're nothing but dirt on your tiniest of boot that still manages to kill you. But it also introduces a bunch of new stuff that'll keep the whole ordeal fresh, like a brand new Sengoku period inspired setting or a new skill focused XP system and a combat style that'll make even the most jaded souls veteran feel like it's their very first time. The fun of Sekiro's combat is in the way it makes defense your best offense. Enemies have a health bar and a posture bar. Fill that bad boy up and you can do a death blow, instantly killing regular enemies and taking a notch off bosses. But attacking isn't great for doing posture damage. You gotta block right for that. Take this Wolverine Necromorph hybrid for instance. He attacks fast, does a lot of damage and is scary in a butt face ugly kind of way. But when you get his rhythm down and block at just the right moments, he's easy. This essentially turns Sekiro into an incredibly satisfying yet dangerous rhythm game. Even when dealing with unblockable attacks, your defense is a weapon. After jumping over a sweep attack, you can give him a quick boot to the noggin, or when a ninja comes sliding in with a Booker T style bicycle kick, you can stomp on it and end that man's life. Soulsborne games have always been about picking apart an enemy, downloading their DNA into your mind and then beating them over the head with it. But it's better here because when you react to something you've learned, you're instantly rewarded for it. <coughs> the one-on-one -on -one combat is a super satisfying clash of swords where you're so close to your enemy, you can smell their grubby breath and that makes it dangerous and exhilarating. You can go your own way. Upsettingly, you aren't going to be able to play dress up in Sekiro. Oh, suit you, sir. Oh. It doesn't have a ton of weapons or armor. It doesn't even have a character creator. But you still have a huge collection of tools and a way to build your own playstyle. To start, there are so many skill trees. You can unlock abilities like recovering health on a death blow or reflecting attacks in midair. Or these awesome combats so that you kick arse with an acrobatic flurry of blows. Then there's the prosthetic tools like the axe that breaks shields or the umbrella that protects from range attacks. These tools have a niche purpose but you can improvise with them as well. The axe does a ton of posture damage to non-shielded enemies and the umbrella is perfect for an overly aggressive foe. This freedom even extends into how you approach encounters. Take this chunky sausage of a samurai for example. You could fight him and all his goons together, but you're better off sneaking in, taking a few out, dipping back into stealth, and repeating until it's just you and him. There are so many touches that help with this playstyle as well, like a grappling hook with vertically designed environments and high grass to stealth in. This is a game that makes you feel smart for systematically dispatching enemies, and it gives you the tools to do it well. The story of Sekiro is much more straightforward and personal than its predecessors. You aren't learning about the major players a thousand years later, you get to watch it happen and you'll care. You'll end up force feeding sake to every character just so they'll tell you about that time they got a little bit too close to their cousin. Oh my. That being said, From Software haven't lost their love of mystery and cryptic storytelling. You feel the history of every environment, while the item descriptions still give you insight into this world. This is a captivating setting that masterfully explores the cyclical nature of violence and the corrupting effect of power. There are far too few creepy laughs for a Soulsborne game though. <laughs> you should play Sekiro because it does 
everything that a Soulsborne game does, with a gleaming new look of paint, some banging changes to the combat system, and a cracking story you'll actually follow. And if you fancy some more, here's some similar games to have a look at. Uh, would Monsieur care for an aperitif, or would he prefer to order straight away? Neo takes place in a similar period and adopts a lot of the same aesthetic as Sekiro. It's also the best Soulsborne game not made by From Software. It nails that formula and introduces elements like loot and an active dodge system that make it feel unique. Fury is an indie boss rush game that looks fantastic and rewards you for paying attention. It fills the screen with danger, gives you a fun set of tools to play with, and demands you start learning those patterns. Crypt of the Necrodancer is a super innovative roguelike rhythm game hybrid that can be played with just a dance map. Basically you do all the roguelike stuff of killing and looting, but you have to do it on the beat. It's a merging of genre that works surprisingly well, and you should be able to carry over all that rhythm you've learned in Sekiro. Right, like if you like, subscribe if you fancy it, and here's some cool Sekiro stuff to watch. Top left is a fantastic video about the themes of Sekiro's narrative, top right is a measured discussion on the difficulty controversy, and all my bollocks is right there at the bottom. Alright, video over.